All right, very good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. It's Wednesday, 28th of July, and in this briefing, I'm going to talk predominantly about the three big mega cap tech names to get really earning season fully underway. And these three companies actually constitute around 37% of the entire NASDAQ 100 index from a market capitalization point of view. So really wanted to run through these. But before I do that, just a very quick overview of market sentiment and look at a couple of charts from a broader cross asset class perspective before we get stuck into some of those line by line details on those earnings. And as far as the actual NASDAQ reaction was concerned, we'll talk about the single stock fluctuation that was seen uh, individually in aftermarket trade. But you can see here some extensions on these wicks, but really not too much of a reaction in the NASDAQ future, partly because Apple was lower about 2% in aftermarket trade. Alphabet was up about 3%. And Microsoft was actually pretty unchanged. So all in all, kind of netting each other off to some respect. So the Nasdaq future um, has partially recovered that sell-off that we saw commence through the open of Wall Street yesterday after we saw a rejection, uh, pretty much that triple double top from uh, the all-time highs going into the open pre the US open yesterday, I should say. And so on the upside now, any further retracement of that, I'd be keeping an eye really around uh, 14,965, you can see here was that previous era of support to price going through the back end of last week uh, and also uh, was an area of resistance on the recovery that we saw going into the final half an hour of trade on Wall Street and with the post-market futures fluctuation with Asia Pac top following some of those mega cap um, earnings. So NASDAQ off its highs but still right up there on a higher time frame perspective. Um, elsewhere, the FX markets are pretty quiet overall. The dollar index, not too much change, and that's really reflected in both the major pairs. Just looking at a 60-minute chart here at the euro, uh, from a technical perspective, that trend line has been holding up very nicely. This is the same one we've been looking at throughout the course of the last fortnight or so, uh, being respected now on the fourth occasion during the late session yesterday, uh, pretty much to the tick, actually. And just backing off from that initial run up that we saw during uh, the bulk of yesterday's session with some of the ensuing dollar weakness that we were observing at the time. So um, point of opportunity to just book some profits on that brief run up that we had in the euro. And then for sterling, you know, despite a lot of the negatives that might be occurring, uh, there is a slight update on the COVID side uh, that we'll look at in a moment, um, but still remaining fairly elevated. Um, trend line breaks and, and pushes seem to be a pretty re recurring theme at the moment. You can see that here. Uh, this is going back through a week long trend line. And then the breakout that we saw, uh, this is going back to Monday session. And then again, short term breakout, multiple tests. And then we saw a bit of a lift through three o'clock yesterday. Uh, and then we've just kind of moved right up um, toward the highs that we were seeing going back to the 14th, 15th of the month. Um, in terms of that technical level, um, that was being respected late yesterday uh, and will be something we'll be keeping an eye on today with the psychological 139 handle also positioned at around the same kind of area as well. Otherwise, final charts really to look at. T-notes pretty quiet, not really to mention there. Gold top right just ranging, top end of that range I should say. Uh, up about $6 this morning. And as far as WTI crude is concerned, again, respecting um, this kind of consolidation period that we've been in since the end of last week. So upside level to keep an eye on still 72.33. Um, and that does come um, with the API all inventories they were seen last night. We had a crude drawdown of 4.728 million, so slightly deeper. Um, than was expected gasoline, particularly bullish. There was a heavy drawdown of 6.226 million, cushing a draw as well of 126,000. So um, oil just remaining fairly buoyant above 72 bucks for the time being going through the European Open this morning. So let's get straight into it and talk about some of these earnings then. Starting off with Apple. Um, I, I, it's interesting because I was listening to some of the media this morning and they were talking about the kind of profit levels and revenue levels and how astronomically high they are and technology firms uh, have been performing continuously so well. The point being here is that, yeah, that's great. Apple's making a whole bucket of money. Fantastic. But the shares fell 2%. So context is important. Uh, and I think 
you know, with someone like Apple, I was reading a couple of market commentators last night when this was all coming out, and they were kind of saying, you know, it's great, Apple are really kind of smashing it on the numbers, but it's this kind of outlook really of the longer term pattern that we've been seeing of um, you know, where do they go next with their product line, with their innovations, as they kind of squeeze the products that they have. Uh, slightly more longer term perspective, because there are perhaps some more rationale here as to why um, they did dip. So just going through the numbers firstly, their EPS, $1.30, beat expectations, revenue smashed it at $81.4 billion against $73.3 billion expected. Um, in terms of the iPhone revenues, obviously a uh, key metric, and again, smashed it, $39.57 billion against $34 billion expected. Quite a few people were keeping an eye on the iPad um, and the Mac um, in particular, given the increase that we'd seen and whether or not they could sustain momentum, given the lift that those particular, the latter product was seeing through the onset of the pandemic and the work from home kind of environment. And the Mac revenues were 8.24 billion, above the expected 8.07 billion. So it all sounds pretty good overall. Their services, which is the other kind of monster area now of the firm, had a 17.49 billion print on revenues above 16.33. Um, keep in mind as well with a lot of these tech stocks, uh, and Apple's a real case in point because it's very usual price activity, you tend to get this kind of buy into earnings and then it's almost like buy the rumor, sell the fact. They come in, uh, they exceed expectations, and then they kind of drop off a little bit um, given the, the pre-positioning that they've seen going into the earnings release. The third quarter typically is... Apple's slowest period with consumers holding out for the new iPhones launches, which typically historically happen around September. But the 5G iPhone 12 appears to have helped the company buck that trend. Um, as I mentioned in yesterday's briefing in the preview, quite a few people were commenting on the fact that a lot of the kind of um, mobile carriers in America, AT&T, Verizon and such, were, were putting out some pretty aggressive deals during the period of the pandemic as well. Um, they did guide Q4 revenue growth of double digits, but below the Q3 growth of 36%. They do expect supply constraints in Q4 to be greater than Q3, which will primarily impact the iPhone and iPad. So something to be aware of um, there. Otherwise, then in aftermarket, this is what it looked like. As I said, they were down about 2.1%. Uh, so you know, just kind of fading a little bit. Nothing too um, fantastic, though. That doesn't make me feel particularly uh, bearish about the stock or anything like that. Again, it's good to put it in context of recent days uh, price action. Microsoft, the other big company. Uh, and actuality, if you look at the post-market trade for Microsoft, they actually dipped quite badly. I mean, they were down, I think, at the time when I was watching, maybe 25 3%. And then they saw this really big rally. So when I came in actually this morning, I, I had another check through uh, these price charts. Uh, and that did shock me a little bit about the recovery, which obviously when you see a price uh, reaction like that, there's definitely got to be a reason. Um, when you see very distinct, sharp and immediate price reaction like that, it's normally down to a fundamental catalyst and of which there is one and I will cover. So it, by the numbers, uh, EPS 217, um, exceeded expectations in 192, revenues 46.2 billion, again above expectations by around 2 billion. Their intelligent cloud area, which is uh, the one that's closely followed, came in at 17.4 billion, above the expected 16.34 billion. Um, investor optimism was tempered initially by concern about slowing growth in their Azure cloud computing business. So Azure sales increased 51% in the period, but investors had hoped for a faster rate of growth. Um, well, obviously, Microsoft's facing very stiff competition at the moment by the kind of industry leader from Amazon's AWS. And also Google, which ranks quite far in third position. Problem is there is that Alphabet are pouring in resources into that business to try and catch it up with the likes of Microsoft uh, and Amazon. So more increased competition. And although... I said Azure sales increased 51% in the period. The market is super hungry. Investors love to see super bullish figures on that front. And so that, in fact, was a slight disappointment. However, as I said, in the post-market trade, it really ramped back up. Uh, and in the end, with Microsoft, um, they did have in their conference call, 
they guided Q1 revenues at 43.3 to 44.3 billion, and that was above expected 42.2 billion. They also see Q1 productivity and business process revenues uh, at a decent rate, as too as their Q1 intelligent cloud revenues at around 16.5 billion US dollars. So on the back of those outlook on the guidance, the shares pop back up again. And then the final one to talk about is uh, Alphabet or Google. And, and actually, their shares were very positive on the back of that. At one point, they were up as much as 4%, kind of flattened out with a gain of about 3.26%. So their EPS <laughs> absolutely blew uh, street estimates out of the water, 2726 against $19.34. Revenue is 61.88 against 56.16 billion. In terms of some of the top level uh, numbers, the one that really matters is Google services revenues, 57 billion above the expected 52. Uh, they also had YouTube ad revenue exceed at 7 billion against 6.3. Um, so after digital ad slowdown a year ago during the pandemic, Google's advertising businesses uh, rebounding buoyed by marketers spending more on search to convince consumers to travel, to go back into shops again, digital spending on online spending, and so on and so forth. So yeah, really strong numbers for, for Alphabet. One of the other ones I just wanted to mention, because there's a lot of focus on chip makers at the moment, given a lot of the global supply constraints that's led to some of these transitory inflationary conditions, is AMD. Uh, and in fact, AMD did rise about percent in aftermarket trade. So their EPS beat, their revenues beat, and they raised their full year 2021 revenue growth view to 60% year on year from previous 50%. Um, so good numbers from them. And this morning, there have been some others. I know just as I clicked on the mic to come on live, I've just seen Barclays come out, but just going to focus on Deutsche for the time being. Um, so Deutsche Bank have come out earlier this morning. They're seen up around... Uh, 2% ahead of the market open. Again, I'm filming this just after 7 a.m. this morning, so another hour or so to the cash market open on the Deutsche Bourse. Um, but in general, uh, really summarized by the point, they weathered a slump in fixed income trading better than their peers, prompting it to raise its revenue target for next year uh, as the main catalyst for their share price reaction. So a whole ton of earnings coming out. Um, and it's not having too much of a dramatic effect. As I said, those big mega cap tech earnings have kind of netted each other off from the negative rep price reaction effect from Apple to the very positive um, uh, in Alphabet and then kind of leveled out in the end for MSFT. So any price recovery that we see, um, certainly in the likes of the, the NASDAQ, I'll be keeping an eye on that aforementioned level, uh, which would be around 50% retracement of the sell-off that we had yesterday if we're looking at the day trading environment. As far as the DAX is concerned, obviously Deutsche are pretty, pretty decent, um, but you know, Deutsche is not as big as a company as it used to be in many years gone by, but nonetheless a positive kind of force. And on the upside here from a technical perspective in the DAX, I'd be keeping an eye on 15,577, which you can see was a inflection point with support resistance um, going back over yesterday's session. Um, well, yesterday and the Asia Pack top was at that level. Uh, and the DAX can really run pretty quickly, so I'd be quite keen to watch that uh, as that price develops as we go through the volume push on the cash open later. Um, a few other, very quickly, just going to run over a few other points, but I don't want to talk too much about it. But in Asia, a uh, few things to be aware of. Um, Chinese stocks, obviously, very much in focus at the moment in that region, given the um, Beijing crackdown on technology and education, seeing tech sector getting absolutely hammered. Um, consecutively in recent sessions, but Chinese stocks actually kind of steadied in overnight trade. Um, and elsewhere, the BOJ policymakers uh, appearing undeterred by increasing global debate on withdrawing crisis kind of um, mode stimulus in their latest debate from their July meeting, some calling for the need to avoid a premature exit of stimulus. And we did have some Australian CPI data overnight. Um, was quite high, 3.8%. I mean, this is up from 1.1%, but that 3.8% was in line with expectations. And actually, it really reflected the impact of a one-off factor, uh, free care, free child care that fueled the gain um, was what lifted that number. And the core component, stripping out volatility, only actually was at 1.6%. So no real reaction seen in the Aussie dollar. And then also from North Korea, something to be aware of, 
um, was that there was a headline at North and South Korea in talks to reopen a joint liaison office that Pyongyang demolished last year, and they're going to hold a summit as part of efforts to restore relations, according to three South Korean government sources. So, yeah, not not none of what I've just mentioned there. I've ran through it very quickly because it's stuff to be aware of, but nothing that's really constituting um, what's moving markets this morning or should really be part of a, a trade strategy in the, in the intraday environment. So just having a quick look at the day ahead, obviously the main thing that most people are looking at is the FOMC, but as far as this morning is concerned, it's pretty quiet overall. You've got some CAD inflation data coming out at 1.30. Um, you've also got the DOE all inventory numbers to follow for the APIs at your regular time, the 3.30 London time, and then the Fed at 7 o'clock. And the Fed, a um, bit of talk around this meeting, but I would say it's a little bit, I think, too premature for the Fed to really start talking more explicitly about this idea and, and, and their kind of tactical approach around tapering. So I think they're just going to maintain a fairly steady course. Uh, we've seen COVID cases really started to pick up um, in the U.S., We've had some gyration in recent economic data points. And so I think that constitutes just waiting out until the predefined timeline that most Wall Street banks are looking for, which is more talking about the end of August, Jackson Hole, formalized with the, the latest projections we'll get in September's meeting, rather than this meeting that's going to happen tonight. Um, ING analysts note that Powell made it clear in his recent testimony to Congress um, that he continues to believe inflation pressures will be largely transitory and there isn't any pressing need to signal any imminent shift in policy given the fact that employment levels remain 6 million lower than where they were pre-pandemic and uh, I would agree with that which is why I'm not expecting too much in the way of market reaction to that later on tonight. On the COVID side there are a few things just to be aware of. The CDC overnight have recommended now fully vaccinated individuals wear masks in public indoor settings to prevent the further spread of the Delta variant. Um, Texas in America has posted now its biggest daily jump in new cases and hospitalizations in almost five months. Uh, in the UK, you probably would, would have read that consistent streak of declining new cases has continued. 23,500 cases were reported in the UK yesterday, down for a seventh day, but the number of deaths had jumped to 131, which is the most since the 17th of March. But we know that there's kind of a laggard effect between um, the case rates and the death numbers. And so we would anticipate that that number would come down, at least for the time being, but dependent on where the case rates go from here on out. Uh, and then Sydney and Australia's months-long lockdown is going to be extended for another four weeks, is the current status there as well. So still, um, in a global sense, trying to manage this COVID situation uh, at the moment is still very much at the at the forefront. Um, but to summarize, overall market sentiment this morning, fairly neutral, um, dollar flat, um, equity index futures pretty flat, the NASDAQ not seeing much in any outright real direction on the back of those earnings, even though we're talking about over one third of the NASDAQ having reported last night. And so really just keeping on those technical levels, NASDAQ recovery point, the range high um, from the the area that's been holding price in oil, range high gold, um, and the FX markets as well um, from those aforementioned levels I discussed. All right, that is it. Going to let you get on with the day. Hope that was useful. Any questions at all, feel free to drop a comment. Happy to help uh, and take care. Thanks very much.